Hi, it's me, and today I'm going to be talking about this while painting this. <laughs> Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. I've spoken about motivation before because I get lots of questions about it for the Q&As at the end of my studio vlogs, namely how do I find motivation and how do I stay motivated. Last night I didn't feel motivated to paint at all, but I wanted to make this video and I thought I should practice what I preach. I've said this before, when you're creative for a living it can be really difficult to be motivated all of the time and so you need to find discipline. Waiting to be motivated isn't enough. You need to be able to learn how you can work even when you don't feel like doing it. When you feel unmotivated, it can be easy to assume that you have creative block and that other creative people are getting stuff done because they have some sort of untapped source of inspiration. This isn't true at all, dudes. <laughs> it's a really tempting thought to believe because it makes it easy to throw in the towel. We all have ups and downs. I have days where I feel terrible and then I have days where I feel really, really motivated. But I think it's the more experienced people that can find ways to work without initially feeling motivated. So if you're feeling lazy or complacent, you might find yourself wanting to procrastinate or do other things because you don't have a clear idea of what you want to achieve. I found it really useful to figure that out even before picking up a paintbrush. One way of doing this for me is to sketch. In other contexts, this may mean creating a to-do list with major to-dos as well as bite-sized subtasks to make jumping into work as easy as possible. So for example, if your to-do is cleaning your studio or cleaning your space, your subtask could be clean your desk, vacuum, sort out paintbrushes, etc. So you feel accomplished every time you finish a task and you feel like subtask by subtask, the end goal is becoming more and more clear and more and more achievable. Once the ball is rolling, things should flow more easily. And I repeat, starting is the hardest part, especially for me. I guess what I mean is that this is less about working when you feel unmotivated and more about not waiting for motivation to hit you. Sitting around and waiting to feel inspired is I'm sure something we've all experienced, but unfortunately, it's extremely inefficient. It's about trying to manage a lack of motivation and finding the small things that will coax you into feeling motivated to start so that you're on track later. I'm not super happy with this piece. There are definitely things I would have changed, but it's these quick no-brainer paintings that remind me that if I will myself to work when I don't feel like it, the work will still get done. If you're on YouTube procrastinating right now, I see you, I hold you accountable. This is my way of saying, just go do it, do it. I'll see you at the end of the video. Feel free to use this time to write a little to-do list so that you can get onto it when this video ends. See you soon. on more topics so if you also have any suggestions for other topics please leave them below that would be cool usually in studio vlogs i kind of ask people if they have any questions for me that i can answer at the end but since this time i've already kind of said all i need to say on motivation i think it would be nice to hear from you guys so i tweeted out yesterday making a video on motivation instead of you asking me questions for the end i would love to hear from you what are your thoughts on the topic of motivation some pretty interesting answers actually so let's hear what some of you had to say about motivation I feel like the easiest way for me to become motivated is when I'm motivated by fear and it works, but I think there should be better ways. Um, surprisingly, I totally know what you mean. I actually wrote a article about the fear of regret and how that kind of drives me forward. And I think that's a similar thing. And I think it does work. I think use whatever makes you motivated. Um, everyone is different. So if that's how you work, as long as it's not really destructive, I think that's fine. Oh, this one's good. So my friend Jess, basically, she's like a letterer. Her and her husband are like one of my favorite couples to hang out with. Uh, Rock and I love going to their place and hanging out. So she says, sometimes it's okay not to be motivated too. That is so true. Like, I think you need to, um, I think being relaxed and taking time off is a super, 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 super important part of the process. So definitely make time to do nothing. I totally get where Jess is coming from. Like don't beat yourself up to the point where it's self-destructive because that's gonna be worse than forcing yourself to work. Someone else said, I find it 
always hard to find motivation, but I have a few tips. One, be ready, make it easy, have everything set up. Your motivation should be used to do stuff, create, not tidy your desk or setting things up. Otherwise you're tired and demotivated before you even start. Two, make small steps, but do something. Don't overthink and make a prototype, a first version. It won't be perfect, but in addition to give give a first feedback, it will give you motivation. Because you've achieved something, you will reward and get extra motivation to continue. Yeah, I definitely agree with those things, especially the first one. I think um, as soon as you feel motivated, work straight away. So I need to be better at having a tidy workspace, but the reason that that's good is so that you can get straight into it and you don't have to clear a space first. Another thing is not feeling like you have to have a final piece produced first. I would start with sketches. The reason why I do that is because it's the fastest way to get my ideas down onto paper. And once you do that, it kind of like keeps the creativity flowing. So I agree with both of those things. I think motivation comes from a place of passion and setting goals that are big but achievable for you in your state of mind at that moment. That's definitely true too. Understanding what you're capable of. If that day you have PMS, you got cramps, you don't have any time, you have family obligations, don't make your to-do list so large that it becomes so overwhelming and you feel like you can, can't finish it because that's going to make you feel defeated even before you start. I would suggest having a larger to-do list where you write everything you can possibly think of that you need to get done and then have a smaller to-do list where you have like your top three most important things to get done so that you're not overwhelmed by the amount of tasks that you have at hand. Writing down your goals for the future but also reflecting back on your achievements sort of help keep the motivation alive and allows you to see that you aren't as stagnant in a process as you think you are. That is so true. I think that I need to do better at this too. Like as soon as I tick off a, a project or goal, I'm onto the next thing, next thing, next thing. Like I don't even feel like I fully understand that I've published a book and it's in bookstores across Australia and some in New Zealand. Like I need to be more reflective on my own successes. So you need to be as supportive and positive to yourself as you are with other people because I think we forget to do that a lot of the time and that can be really demotivating. For real, forget motivation and inspiration. They're fair weather friends. Just make work even if you don't feel like it. If, you, if you'll put in eight hours a day for a boss but not for your own work, then you're only cheating yourself. Take away the mysticism, log the hours, anyone can do it. It's so true. Even if like you have zero time and you put like one or two hours a week in, you eventually will have a hundred hours of work into place and then 1000 hours of work into place and you will have improved. Like you will see an improvement for sure. This one I like, making a comfortable environment. Tea, favorite podcast on. Eat a good hearty breakfast helps to set me in the right mindset for concentration and focus. It's hard to find motivation when my house is messy and there's a ton of other things on my mind. That I totally agree with that. I can still work when my house is messy. Um, Rocket's the opposite. He cannot work when there's something that's messy in the house. Whatever your creature comforts are, a nice smelling candle, cup of tea, a coffee, a podcast, music, anything that makes you feel comfortable, I think it will help you work. I have a studio playlist that's filled with like guilty pleasures and things that really, really pump me up no matter what. Like, and it really, really helps me get in the mood to work. So it's about creating the right environment so that when you're ready to work, you can get straight into it, no excuses. I like that one. This person said, I guess the usual is that sometimes we all think we're not good enough, but lately I've been thinking about like, do, does my work even have meaning or does it matter? And it's messing me up. I think that's another, another um, example of not putting too much pressure on yourself. I see a lot of people um, on YouTube especially, they do fully fledged artworks in their sketchbook. I don't do that. My sketchbooks are like the most raw, gross, like messy thing you've ever seen. So I think that you need to, to make sure you know that that's not what sketchbooks were originally for. I feel like they were for working through ideas and kind of getting initial ideas down, not worrying too much about who's gonna see it because I feel like the sketchbook, at least for me, is a very private thing. I don't feel like when I'm drawing at them, anyone will see them. So I think you need to take the pressure off yourself and realize that you don't need to show anyone anything unless you want to, so that you have a safe space for yourself to feel completely free to make the work that you wanna make and experiment and not be so afraid to fail. My website motivates me to do work. I enjoy displaying my work on there so much that it motivates me to do more work purely so I can put it on there. Um, can I have some of whatever you're eating? Website stuff scares me sometimes. It's not that it's hard to put up, it's that it's hard for me to be happy with my work enough to share it, especially after a week. But I'm really happy that that's like that for you. I think um, what I agree with is that it's about finding the thing that motivates you. So whether it be the fact that you can share it to Instagram, share it online, whether it be you're sharing it in your portfolio, building your skill set, building your portfolio, whether it be the therapy that it gives you, making the stuff, find whatever you find most important and keep that goal in mind for when you're making stuff and it should really push you through.
Boost of motivation is discipline. There will definitely be days, maybe even weeks and months, where you have no motivation to work. Who knows? Getting into gear and producing results might actually result in your best work. It's true. A good example of this for me is I was doing this painting. I'll put it here. Basically, um, halfway through I was kind of like, oh, I don't think this is going to be good. I was about to literally tear it up and throw it away. But I thought, no, I'll push through it. And even if it doesn't work out, I don't have to show it to anyone. And I finished it, put it online because I was happy with it. And it completely blew up on Tumblr, on Instagram. Like, the way that you judge yourself can be completely different to how everyone else sees your work. So, while you have to be happy with the work that you're putting out and make sure that you have, like, a level of consistency, it helps not to be so strict with yourself and not to be so down on the stuff that you create. A quick to-do list before work always helps me. I break everything into small achievable tasks and draw a box next to each item. When I do the thing, I get to tick the box and I like ticking boxes. I can also see everything I've done and I have a clear plan for what to do next. To be honest, I mostly do this when I'm about three quarters of the way through a project. I often lose some motivation at this point. A two minute brainstorm of re remaining tasks and a written to-do list is my roadmap to finishing the project and knowing that it actually is finished. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I do. For me, it's more like halfway. I get really down and I'm just like, this is not going to end well. I'm just like, I hate this. But it's exactly right. It gives you kind of an idea of where you need to go and show you that everything that you actually have achieved. Even if you, sometimes I write things on the to-do list that I've already done just so I can cross them off. It's just so satisfying. This one's good too. I think it's a good mentality to understand that all living things have on and off periods. Flowers die and grow back, animals hibernate, etc. Humans are expected to be go, go, go all year round and it's not fair on your body and mind. Motivation will come back naturally. I definitely agree that you have to take downtime, but I also believe in the importance of like not waiting for motivation, as I said before. It really just depends on what works for you. I wanted to focus on like more than my perspective because I'd like these topic-based videos to be kind of a discussion and my opinion will never be the only right way to do stuff. Everyone's different, so I think it was really important for me to reach out to you guys. Um, I hope you like this video. Please let me know what you think wherever you want to. I just wanted to thank Squarespace again for sponsoring this video. If you guys need a beautiful website, in my opinion, Squarespace is the best place to do it. I've used a lot of platforms um, to build websites over my like several years of being in the industry and none of them have worked as smoothly. I'm just so happy that they're continuing to sponsor me because it's a brand that I love. Um, and I will continue to use all the time. Oh, also, I just updated my website, speaking of my website, with my FAQ page. So basically, questions that I get asked a lot, I'll link that below. And also, um, for those of you who weren't receiving my newsletter and you had signed up, or if you wanted to have a look at the newsletter without signing up, I've made a page that has like the archive of my newsletters, which is only like two, two newsletters, but I mean, if you're interested, it's there, and it will build up over time. So maybe by the time you see it, it'll have three newsletters. <laughs> Those pages were super easy, easy to create. It literally took me a minute per page. So I would definitely recommend trying Squarespace. If you want to try it out, go to squarespace.com slash peach. You will get a two week free trial and a 10% discount on your first purchase. So it's a win-win, like no strings attached. Defos give it a go. Thanks for watching up until this point. I just didn't know if anyone would watch it all the way, but if you did, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon with another studio vlog. Bye!